Hi, I'm here, I did it. Okay, so if you're joining me in the replay, do a little hashtag replay in the comments so that I know that you were here and other people will see it because there are like, you know, over a thousand people in this group and my videos only get like 50 views because of how Facebook works. Um, it's nice to see you guys. Let me kind of get my, my face, my hair situated here. So I have to look at myself. You guys have to look at me. It may as well look, you know, medium. <laughs> Um, Spike, you want to come say hello? You want to you want to show us your toy? Look at the toy you brought. Okay. Well, here's Spike, and here's the toy he just went to get. <laughs> His favorite little numpkin. We have about twenty of these. Yeah, you can have them. We have like twenty of those at this point in various states of disarray. <laughs> So um, I'm coming on here to talk about why I just quit teaching at UCSB um, from a financial perspective because I know a lot of other healers, a lot of other yoga teachers are, are in this scenario. And so I wanted to share my thoughts and kind of how I'm, I'm working within this, this um, you know, apocalypse <laughs> situation when I have to give up things that I really love. So um, I've taught at UCSB, the University of California, Santa Barbara. I've been a, a yoga instructor there for three years. We got through the online thing thanks to the platform I had already built, Splendid Yoga Online. Um, hi, Devin, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, and they asked in February if I would come back and teach in fall of this year on campus. And uh, at that point, you know, of course, no one knew what the circumstances were going to be. And so I said, sure. And then they asked if I could teach four classes because they had just fired all their teachers. And I said, <laughs> um, yeah, I can teach four classes. They didn't fire all their teachers. I don't know what happened with all the other teachers, um, but the other teachers weren't available anymore. So um, they told me I would have to be vaccinated or fill out an exemption form. So I did that, that was fine. They then sent me a ton of emails about all the other procedures I would have to follow, which I ignored um, because I get thousands of emails every single day and they were paying me, you know, around 25 bucks an hour, around 50 bucks a class to show up and teach uh, in Santa Barbara. And I was having to commute from LA, which is of course my choice. They're not responsible for that. Although if you don't pay a living wage, how can you afford to live in the town where you work? That's that's one part of it. So I show up for campus the first week. It was amazing. I loved being back on campus. I loved being able to interact with the students one on one. I loved um, the connection and the help that I could see them giving. <laughs> you waved back by accident. That's funny. <laughs> um, that's funny, Devin. Um, so uh, it was so great to be on campus, everything was fine. I go back the second week and there's a minder in, in front of the room checking everyone's badges. And I'm supposed to have this green badge and he's like, do you have your badge? And I said, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. And then I think back to those emails and I'm like, oh, this is probably what those emails were about. <laughs> And um, I said, I don't have a green badge, but I'm the instructor, let me call my boss. And he was like, uh, and you know, he's like an 18 year old kid, probably getting paid minimum wage. He's like, well, I, if you're the instructor, I'm sure it's okay. And he lets me go in and I'm emailing my boss and I'm like, how do I get a green badge? What do I have to do? And she forwards me the emails that she had sent me and I'm like, oh, I have to go get a COVID test. Okay, that's fine. I'll go do that on my lunch break. Um, so I go get the COVID test and now I'm like, okay, so now I have to trade body fluids to teach here on a weekly basis. All right, well, that's a little big brotherish, but you know, we're in a pandemic, so here we are. Um, and then I go and look at like the survey and everything that I have to like, you know, essentially just give up liability of anything that happens to me on campus related to COVID or not. Um, and I'm like, oh, I have to do this every single day I'm gonna come on campus and I have to pay for parking. And at this point, like I'm giving up clients to be here, so I'm, I'm losing money. Like I was gonna make around 2000 bucks for, you know, the whole semester teaching four classes. Um, I could easily make three times that teaching half as many classes here in Los Angeles and not have the commute. So from a financial perspective, it just didn't make sense. Um, and then I start, you know, we all had to have our masks on in, inside of the classroom and there, you know, I, I had gotten permission to teach outside. It's just not an ideal scenario on a college campus to teach outside. There's just a lot of noise and distraction. Um, so I was just like, this isn't, this isn't how I wanna teach. I, I don't wanna show up to campus. I don't wanna have to trade my bodily fluids in order to be able to teach here. 
I don't want to have to pay for parking and I don't want to have to, you know, teach these people breathing exercises from behind a mask. I can, I can do this online. I've been doing it online. And if this, this is the crucial thought that I had, if this is what it takes to be safe on campus, then none of us should be on campus. If it is that dangerous that we need to have people coming in multiple times during the class to make sure that everyone has their mask on, and then I'm getting multiple emails afterwards from my, make sure everyone has their mask on. We need to tell everyone to keep their mask on. Keep an eye on, you know, all 40 students you have in class and make sure they all have their masks on at all time. And I'm just like, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I agree, we should. But I'm, I'm not going to do that. I, I don't have to do that to do my work. And these students don't have to do that to do their work, right? We, we all have other options. We have free will. So I sent in my resignation that day and I got a lot of concerned emails from students. I had over, I think, you know, 150 students that I was dealing with. And um, I was devastated. I was really upset. And I spent all weekends being upset about it and like trying to rationalize and negotiate with myself and my own personal values and time. And then I just started getting angry because I thought, you know, a nanny state costs a lot of money. <laughs> and if they can afford a nanny state, if they can afford weekly COVID testing for probably, you know, thousands of people free, if they can afford to have, you know, hire people to stand outside of each classroom for every single class and make sure they all have green badges, if they can afford to send minders around to every single class happening throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the semester, check to make sure everyone is wearing their mask, they can afford to pay me some more motherfucking money. And if they don't wanna do that, I don't wanna work for them. They don't wanna give me hazard pay, but they wanna put me through all this other rigmarole. No, absolutely not. So at this point, I've, they've asked me to teach online, which is what I wanted in the first place, um, because I don't, whether I was vaccinated or not, college campuses are germ factories. And like, it was always kind of an issue for me to teach there. I'd have to do severe energetic boundaries so that I didn't get, you know, just like all the college illnesses that float around schools. Schools are germ factories. And, um, you know, the reason I taught there was to give the students what I needed when I was a student at UCSB, those like 20 years ago. Um, and it sucked. It sucked being on campus. They told us my entire first six months I was there, we are trying to weed you out. So I dropped out because I was like, oh, I guess you guys don't want me here. <laughs> I ended up going back and graduating. I did get my degree in English from them, um, but I didn't enjoy it. And uh, my decision to go back and teach there was to like try to be the change I wanted to you know, see in the world, to like be the teacher, to be the support that I needed. And I was able to do that for thousands of students that I taught over the years. Um, but at this point, I, it was just too much and it didn't make any sense. And everyone I talked to in my life about it, including the people who like I really trust to say like, you're full of shit. <laughs> We're like, no, no, you made the right decision here because I made the right decision for me and I have to trust that it's the right decision for everyone else, whether that means we're going to keep it online and that's the safest thing for everyone, whether they find another teacher who's better suited to that scenario or whether they just cancel the whole program or whether all the students are like, fuck this noise, which is what I, I'm going to tell them to do. <laughs> um, not, I'm not going to tell them to fuck this noise, but I am going to tell them that a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of them are paying a lot of money to go there. And that makes them in charge, right? Because if the school doesn't have their money, they don't have a school. Um, they pay me money, so I can't enact any change. But the students, the customers, the clients, they can demand change. And if they wanna know how to do it, I'm gonna teach them how to do it. Because I love teaching people how to fuck the patriarchy. And this is all patriarchal bullshit. I can't teach somewhere where they don't trust me and they don't trust the students to breathe. Because that's all yoga is, is breathing. And if they don't trust me to breathe, and they, and the other side of this is like, all of these policies are put in place, not for our safety, because my friends, they did not require a negative COVID test, just a COVID test, right? And it was gonna take a day or two to get the results, but they were like, oh no, you can go teach now. And I was like, how does that work? Like I get contact tracing, but if they were really concerned about keeping me safe, they would wait for a negative test, right? No, all they care about is liability. All they care about is not getting sued. So it's the lawyers making these decisions, not, not the healers, not the people who are trying to make this, you know, the best case scenario. So all that to say is I, I put in my resignation, they wouldn't accept it, we negotiated. They told me I could teach online for the time being. And so that's what I'm doing. And it's, I, it, it's great. And it was a nice little like moment for me to stand my ground as like, I don't disagree with what you're doing, but I don't need to participate in it to do my work. And in fact, it's detrimental to me to participate in this. <laughs> 
Um, so uh, let's bring this back around to personal finance. So there are a lot of you in this sort of situation where you're in a situation you feel like you're being exploited. You're asked to do things that you, you don't feel comfortable doing and you don't feel like you have a leg to stand on. The only way to negotiate is to be willing to walk away, okay? And that's your first step is to say, I'm, I'm walking away, I quit, I don't need this. And then see what they say, see if they start to negotiate from there. Um, I'm in a place of privilege. I wasn't relying on my UCSB income, you know, a couple thousand bucks a year to live my life. It was a bonus, but it wasn't, you know, I, I have many other income streams. And this is why I tell you guys all the time, you must have multiple income streams because you must have the ability to say, fuck you, I'm out. <laughs> and that's what multiple income streams gives you. Okay, so um, this is my life for the week. I, li I missed last week because I was upset about UCSB, but I'm here this week. And I'll be back next week and we'll find some more stuff to talk about. Uh, leave me some comments. Let me know you watched this all the way through. Let me know what resonated with you. And let me know like if you need help building these multiple income streams, leave a comment. Just say like, help me, I need help. And I'll send you links to the resources that I have here in the group, that I have on my YouTube channel, that I have all over my blog about how to create uh, multiple income streams so that you can have enough money to tell the world to go fuck itself. <laughs> It's fun. I recommend it. All right, my friends, I'm going to jump off of here. Um, if you're here live with me, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Otherwise, I, I'm going to go live my life. Um, I hope you do the same thing. I hope you have a beautiful day. It was storming down here in LA last night, so everything's like bright and shiny and just all perked up, um, as am I. I'll talk to you guys soon. Mwah. <laughs>